What stats can we use to build a model to make predictions about the spread, the total, and the team scores? What's up, everybody? This is Kerry. In this video, we're going to look at some stats, offensive rating, defensive rating, net rating, and so on, that will be used to make predictions about the spreads and the totals. Here are the actual stats we're going to talk about and we're going to use for our model. Offensive rating, defensive rating, net rating, pace, and possessions. These are some very basic stats. They're very easy to calculate. Let's look at the first one here, offensive rating. As I always like to say, the team that scores the most points is going to win the game. Now, I know that sounds pretty obvious, and that's kind of silly to even say that, but that's a great place to start. So the first step we're going to talk about is the offensive rating. The offensive rating is the number of points scored by a team per 100 possessions. When we look at the data, we look at it from the perspective of a particular team. So TM is the team we're considering. POSS is the number of possessions in the game for the particular team. And we simply multiply that by 100. Now that's basically how many points a team will score per possession. So if you think about it, things like field goal percentage, three-pointers taken and then made, and even free throws that are made. Anytime a team scores on a possession, that's obviously good for their offense. So this is how many points they score per possession. That's a really small number. It's just over one typically. We're going to multiply that by 100, which is where we get the per 100 possessions. So the number we look at for offensive rating is the number of points scored for every 100 possessions. And this will be for the individual games as well as the season long averages. Here's a calculation of the Boston Celtics offensive rating for a game they played on 521 2024. The Celtics scored 133 points. They had 113 possessions, which is pretty high. But when we do the division and multiply by 100, we see their offensive rating or offensive efficiency is 117.7. If we're going to talk about offense, of course, we're going to talk about defense. So this is very similar than to the offensive rating. So we look at the opponent points. We take what they score divided by the number of possessions for the opponent. And one more time, we multiply that by 100. Now we have the net rating, and that's just simply the offensive rating minus the defensive rating. That's a very easy subtraction. So when we look at this, this is basically the point differential for a team. How many points do they score per 100 possessions minus how many points do they give up per 100 possessions? Now we have the pace. This is simply the number of possessions, again, divided by minutes. So MIN is the number of minutes for that game. Now, again, that's usually 48 minutes, but that could be 53 for one overtime or 58 for two overtimes or so on. So if we multiply that then by 48, that would be the number of possessions per game. That's what's called the pace. So when we look at these three stats here, offensive rating, defensive rating, and pace, possessions are in each of these stats. Is the number of possessions the most important stat? Maybe it is. Possessions are not necessarily easy to calculate. So I'm going to go with a formula that is used. Here is the first formula that is somewhat complicated. Even though I say simple here, this is somewhat complicated and that we have a lot more stats here. We can think of it like this. What ends a possession? Well, we have a field goal attempt. Either that goes in the bucket or it doesn't, or it's a miss. So if we take the field goal attempts and then subtract the offensive rebounds, because an offensive rebound does nothing more than extend one possession. It doesn't create a new possession. The free throw attempts themselves. Now, some of those free throws might be the end of like an N1. It could be a shooting foul. It could be a, a foul that maybe the team is in the bonus. So there's a lot of different ways that free throw attempts can end a possession. This is not a full number here, so we take point for that. And then finally, a turnover. Of course, a turnover by a team would end their current possession. So this is the basic formula for possessions, the more complicated one. And here we go. Field goal attempts. We start off with that. And instead of offensive rebounds, subtracting those, we basically subtract the percentage of offensive rebounds that the team got based on the total number of potential rebounds. Some of those were defensive rebounds for the opponent. And then we multiply that by the number of misses. And then we multiply that by 1.07. Now, why 1.07? Well, maybe we should ask this person because that's one number I don't know. And then the free throw attempts, we're actually going to multiply by 0.44. It is 0.4 in Dean Oliver's book. But when I did this myself and actually compared it to the NBA possessions, which I believe are the actual accurate possessions, then 0.44 got me closest. And then finally, the number of turnovers. What are we using all this information for? Well, we want to build a model to try to predict the spread, the total, the team score, and the win percentage. These are very popular lines that are bet. The spread, I would say, is the most popular one, then the total, and so on. I'm going to kind of work this one backwards a little bit. When you look at the team score, if we can predict that for both teams, and of course, we get the total. We just add those two numbers together. If we have the prediction for the team score for the team and the opponent, 
then we can just simply subtract those numbers to get the spread. Despite the fact that I have a spread on top here, we're going to shoot for the team score first. Before I get to that, though, we need to do one more stat here. This is the expected pace. Two teams don't necessarily go at the same pace. This is simply going to be the team's pace minus the following. The league average pace, so the average pace among all the teams in the league, minus the opponent's pace, what they want to play at. So when we subtract that there, we actually get a number that if the opponent pace is slower than the average pace, we'll get a positive number. And when we subtract that from the team pace, that means that we're going to get something that is less than the team pace. So that means that that team's going to play at a slower rate. Or if the opponent pace is higher than the league average, that number will be negative. And when we subtract that, we're going to actually end up adding that to the team pace. So that means the team pace might actually go up a little bit. So this is what we're going to do to get the expected pace. So how is that going to be used to make the team score? The first thing we're going to predict here is the team score. The number of points that this team is going to score in a game. So the first thing here is the team offensive rating. This is the number of points that the team will score per 100 possessions. From that, we're going to subtract the following. We look at the league average offensive rating minus the opponent. That's the team this team will play in a game, their defensive rating. That's the first time we're looking at the team's offense versus their opponent's defense. So we subtract this from league average offensive rating. Now, just real quick before we get into this, the league average offensive rating and league average defensive rating are the same thing because the number of points scored in the league is equal to the number of points allowed. The league average offensive rating and defensive ratings are the same number. Now, when we think about this for a second here, if the opponent's defensive rating is smaller than the league's average offensive rating, this number will be positive. Because we're subtracting that from the team offensive rating, that means that team's offensive rating will go down. When the opponent's defensive rating is above the league average offensive rating, this number will be negative. And because we're going to subtract it from that, we're actually end up adding that to the team offensive rating, which means this team will be expected to score more points per 100 possessions than what they normally do. Now, all these numbers are per 100 possessions. To get this number into a game number, we're going to divide that by 100. So that'll be the number of points this team will be expected to score against their opponent per possession, per one single possession, then multiply that by the expected pace of this game. Let's look at an actual example to see how this is calculated. If we look at the individual ratings here, look at the team offensive rating for the Boston Celtics. That's 123.9. Now I'm using these numbers that are at home for the Boston Celtics. I split it up between home and away. So that's the division I have. The league average right now is 114.5. So that number is put in for the league average offensive rating. The Pacers opponent's defensive rating on the road, since this is going to be played in Boston, is 119.7. And then finally, the expected pace for this game is 99.8. So almost 100 possessions. When we do the subtraction within the inner parentheses there we have 114.5 minus 119.7 the Pacers defense gives up more points per 100 possessions in the league average that means we get a negative number in there and again since we're subtracting that number we end up adding that to the team offensive rating so this 123.9 plus 5.2 is 129.1 Divide that by 100, multiply that by 99.8, we get 128.8. So this is our predicted score for the Boston Celtics for Thursday, 523-2024 against the Pacers. That's the prediction right there based on the offensive rating and defensive rating. We could do the same thing for the Pacers and go through all that. But for this particular video, we're just going to look at the stats and look how to make predictions from those stats. So how about the actual spread now? The spread is easy. We just take the predicted opponent score minus the predicted team score. Now, why am I taking the opponent score first? Well, because when we talk about betting and spreads here, the favorite team is going to have a negative number. So if the opponent score is less than the team score, that means that the team is going to have a spread that has a negative in front of it. So that's just so we can make sure that we have the negative number in front of that. But again, a very simple thing to do once we have these two predictions, just subtract opponent score minus the team score, and that's the spread. The total is just as easy. The total is just the team score plus the opponent score. Again, once we have those two numbers, just add them together. That's our total prediction for the game. So finally, what about the win probability? Well, that is one more formula that is not easy to calculate, but let me just go through it really quickly here. This is something we can put in the spreadsheet, which I'll show you in a, in a future video. Basically, what we do here is we use the spread. The spread is basically just the point differential in the game, right? When the game is done playing. So when we put the negative in front of that, that means that the favorite team now has a positive number here, which is what we want. And we basically, that's going to be a normal curve here. That's why it says norm here. This And this is an actual Excel function. That, that's why I'm putting this, because it's going to go into Excel. Then the zero is the average for the entire league, right? With the positive spreads and negative spreads. This third number is the standard deviation of the point differential. And I calculated that to be about 9.56 points. And this is the first time and the only time in any of these formulas 
where I actually typed in a number that I calculated, but I put that in here because I have this particular one in an Excel spreadsheet. We went to cumulative value, so that's why we set the last thing to true. And this particular Excel function gives us the probability of this team with that particular spread of winning the game. So that's it, those are the stats. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the third and final part of building an MBA model, I'm going to show you the Python code from beginning to end. We're gonna scrape the data, we're gonna create this data set, we're gonna create all these stats here, offensive rating, defense rating, and so on. We're gonna save all that information to a nice tidy CSV file, and we're gonna use that in an Excel spreadsheet to make predictions. That'll be the last video in this series on how to build an MBA model to make predictions about the spread and the point total. See you in the next video.